Altcoins are pumping finally today and we have some more awesome information from Solana. This is bullish news, but the overall market isn't really showing us much bullish momentum. So we're going to discuss Bitcoin, Solana, XRP, all of their price action, what I think it means for the market and the news and information that you guys need to know to be fully up to date in this market so you can make informed decisions. With that said, if you like these sorts of updates, all I ask in return is if you smash that like button and let's jump straight into it. So we see here finally, oh, there's some green. There's a little bit of green in the crypto bubbles. We're seeing Casper, obviously our largest position in our public portfolio, up 7.5% today. Feeling a little bit gutted that I didn't buy some more before this pop, but we also see Solana down 4%. Now, I've received a few comments about Solana over the last uh, 24 hours since I made my video yesterday talking about since August 31st, a wallet associated with FTX has sent around $10 million in tokens related to the projects on Solana's ecosystem through the wormhole bridge to another FTX wallet, according to Arkham Intelligence. Now, basically, some of these comments are like, Connor, you're an idiot because... Solana's clearly gone up. And I don't know if these people don't understand how time works, but when you post something on YouTube, you can't then retrospectively change what you've said. But what I said was, I see there a possibility for Solana to retest the lows. I, just because there's been good news doesn't change what's happening in the market. Yes, Solana has been going up around 5% in the last 24 hours, bouncing from the lows there. So it would have been a great buy if you bought yesterday when I said it's probably going to go down a little bit lower. I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know what's going to happen. But guys, what I said was, and what I still think is, I would absolutely love for Solana to come down lower. As you know, here on the channel, I bought some more Solana in and around the price that it is today because I thought that in the bull market, Solana is going to be one of those projects that I think is going to come back and it's going to come back way more than what people expect. Now, I could be totally wrong, but I'm putting my money where my mouth is and dollar cost averaging into it. And I would love for Solana to come down and retest this $8 region or, you know, in and around $8 to $12 here is what we're seeing. But it may never happen. But I want to get as much exposure to this as possible, but keeping my risk to a minimum. I can do that by buying when the market is, you when the market is scared, not when it's euphoric like today. With that said, guys, what has happened? Visa tapped into Solana to widen its USDC payment capabilities. So global payment processor Visa has rolled out support for USD coin payments settled on the Solana blockchain as its stablecoin offering begins to expand, moving millions between USDC, between partners across Ethereum and now Solana blockchains to settle fiat-based payments. An, annou an announcement from the payments firm outlines the evolution of Visa's adoption of USDC from its pilots involving Crypto.com to integrate with merchant payment processors, WorldPay, and Nuivi? Nuvi. Nui? No, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But this is absolutely massive. And this is testament to the market conditions that we're in right now, guys. Huge partnership with Visa and Solana. And Solana's only up 5% in this market, and actually down in the last like couple of hours. So this is testament to the market that we're in. We're in a a fearful market, as we can see over here on the Greed and Fear Index, the Fear Greed Index 6 at 42 today. And people are scared and there are no new buyers. So keep this in mind when you see bullish things for anything. Until we have new buyers come into the market, we're most likely not going to see any altcoins pump massively. So yes, I, my standpoint is still the same as it was yesterday. I believe in Solana in the future. This news is absolutely amazing. In a bull market, it would have pushed the price of Solana up way more. And I do think we're going to see some more blood in the overall market. And that's going to give me more opportunities to dollar cost average into the projects I believe in. Solana does seem to be one of them for me personally. Let me know what you think about Solana down there in the comment section. Now, let's talk a little bit more news, Bitcoin what is going on in this market? So MetaMask announced a fiat, a crypto to fiat cash out. You can now withdraw directly to PayPal or your bank. So this is awesome, right? This is going to be a massive uh, railroad for users going from MetaMask back to their banks or back to their PayPals in the next bull market. So this is just great. This is more easily uh, mass adoption for crypto, which is exactly what we want to see building in this bear market. Grayscale also says its fund is ready to operate as a Bitcoin ETF upon SEC approval. In my opinion, this is going to be incredible for the markets. Again, letting a lot of people into the market who otherwise can't be bothered to actually create themselves a Binance account, a Coinbase account, whatever. They can now or will be able to, once it's approved, be able to buy Bitcoin almost directly or have exposure to it. That's a better way to say it, directly in 
their current brokerage accounts. So I think this is going to be huge. Now, just in $241 billion asset manager founder, Rick predicts Bitcoin reaching $150,000 by summer 2025. Now, that's an incredible amount of money. Bitcoin sits at around $25,000 right now. So that's a 6x from where we sit today. Now, that's lovely. That is exactly what I want for my long-term portfolio. Bitcoin being my largest position in my crypto portfolio. And this is the reason right here why I keep just dollar cost averaging. I want Bitcoin's price to go lower in the short term because I get to buy more. Now, talking about the short and the long term, first of all, let's discuss the short term. Here I am trading. I still have a long position open for Bitcoin. You can get yourself a free 1000 USDT position by following the link in my description. All of the information on how to claim will be directly in that link. This is the link. So if you follow it, you can just read that information and you guys can claim this and you can choose whether you want to go long or short. Currently, I'm in a long position, but looking at the chart here, I think something that would be interesting to do for me personally would be opening up long positions or limit or orders to open up long positions in and around these regions. You know, in and around 24,800, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, 19,500 and 15,500, give or take. Now, this could be quick wicks down to count to catch bounces. So getting involved in, let's say, you know, a $20,000 $20, position, getting ready for if we do have a quick wick down, if there is a black swan event, that sort of thing. But remember, making these positions, only make them if you can sustain a loss down to the next region here and significantly lower, okay? Because this market can move very quickly. So that's the short-term trading strategy that I'm thinking about now. Long-term Bitcoin is great. In my opinion, I want it to come and retest this $15,000 region. It will be painful for me, just like it will be painful for you. But if it happens, I'm just going to think of it. I'm going to ignore the emotion that I'm feeling, the pit in my stomach, and I'm going to go against every emotion in my body and buy more when the market is the most panicked. Every time I've done that in the past, I have regretted not buying more, right? I bought what I considered at the time a ton of Bitcoin, right at around 15.6 or 15.8 when the market was so, so scared. I was like, nah, I got to go against this and I got to buy some. But I could have bought so much more, but I didn't, right? So I've always regretted it and I'm going to continue to regret it because I'm never going to put all of my money in because I'm going by my plan. But every time we head into more fear, more uncertainty, more doubt, I'm going to be dollar cost averaging into my Bitcoin position. Now, XRP itself continues to hold a line of support, which is looking good. It's looking good. We need the overall market for Bitcoin, for altcoins, all of that to get a little bit more bullish. And that's when I believe we'll see more of a push upwards for XRP. Right now, I do have a trade open for XRP in case we do get a quick push upwards. I'll then close that trade in, in, uh, in profit because right now we're sitting just higher than where I got into it. Okay, so if you are trading in the short term for any altcoins, coins. Remember to use good risk management because they can, you know, just absolutely crash down. And I do not think that XRP is any exception. You guys can argue with me and call me an idiot down there in the comment section for thinking that. But as we've seen, clearly, we got one of the most bullish pieces of news here for XRP and actually the overall cryptocurrency market. And we lost 100% of those gains within about a month. So anything can happen in this market. So be prepared for anything to happen. Now, on top of this Visa news that we've had here, Visa taps into Solana. Absolutely awesome. We also have Chainlink partnering with Swift while Ethereum stumbles. So Chainlink is partnering with Swift. Swift is the biggest, I assume it's the biggest payment provider on earth. And they are partnering with Chainlink to bring in these rails because why would these guys be doing this if they didn't think that crypto was here to stay, right? That's, that's how I think about it. So I think this is huge news. Now, on top of that, we also saw X getting that money transfer license. And a lot of us believe that this is going to see Dogecoin being integrated into X. Now that's pure speculation, but I would assume Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum, maybe Dogecoin or whatever coin that Elon likes will be probably integrated into X as he wants it to be the number one financial platform on earth. So why wouldn't he include crypto into that? So, and if he was going to choose a meme coin, odds are it's Dogecoin, right? So that's why I hold Dogecoin in my long-term position, not financial advice, but you guys, Take for that from you will. Now, with the overall market, sadly, we did have the SPX lose our support here, heading a little bit downwards, but maybe, maybe we're just retesting it right now and this is a bit of a fake out. And again, sadly, we have the DXY absolutely hammering upwards, now breaking that region. So we could be clearly in a trend change. We came up from this low here. 
down here we broke through the support we came down we perfectly retested it and pushed upwards as you can see here perfect perfect textbook retest and push upwards so the market isn't looking overall healthy for our risk on assets but that's something that comes in part and parcel for me personally removing my emotions from the market seeing the opportunities but staying safe at the same time slowly dollar cost averaging using money that i don't really care whether or not it goes up or down in the next couple of years is the way I think the, the best mindset to have in this market, because I am expecting another Black Swan event. That doesn't mean there will be another Black Swan event. It means I'm expecting it. So when I make any sort of trade, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put X amount of money in. If there's another Black Swan event, I'm going to put more money in, right? But if there's not, this is enough money to, for me to be like, yes, I still made the best of that opportunity. So that's kind of how I feel. Come over and chat to me directly in my private Discord by following the link to my Patreon down there in the description. You can see my portfolio, my trades, you talk to me directly, my team, all of that sort of good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. A piece from me.